Hello, and welcome to another video from Ellensburg Amplifier Repair and Service here in Central Washington. My name's Todd, and here we have today is the Matt D3000 Revision 1A Amplifier. There's quite the uh, little history behind this one. So uh, this one looks like was made in 2001, uh, which you know, is pretty early for uh, the time of amplifiers. 2001 let's clean up some leftover stuff here real quick uh so i wanted to go over a little bit of history on this and uh what i have found on this amplifier which i don't know is going to be kind of interesting so the customer of this board stated that this amplifier got sent into a uh, Matt's repair tech. I'm not sure if they have their own technicians. I don't know who does their work, uh, but he said it was sent into them for repair. Well, they sent it back saying it was unrepairable. Now, for all my long time viewers of this channel, have I ever really said something is non-repairable it's got to be pretty bad for it to be a not economical to repair uh i i do have a, another board uh i do have a board that i could show you as an example of something i consider not economical to repair um Usually, if it's a big hole in the board that I got to repair and it's going to be, you know, a couple hundred dollars to repair the amplifier, but it's a amplifier board that is, you know, you could probably get a replacement board from the manufacturer for, uh, you know, on the high end, even a hundred bucks. It's still not economical to repair the hole in that board, even if just the repair of the hole in the board was a hundred and twenty five dollars. It just isn't worth it. So. Um, I did run across one of those boards yesterday on a Cap 45 that had a rather large hole in between the transformers at the drivers. Drivers are gone, so I had to let them know it was not economical to repair. So, <clears throat> um, but back to this Matt's amplifier. So again, this was sent in, and they said they couldn't fix it. Well, let's just say... Uh, I've had this, uh, right now, the recording of this is 1224, uh, almost a, uh, it's a Christmas Eve. So, um, I've had this amplifier since November 14th, and I have been working on this since then. Since, uh, even when it first came in, I started working on this. Uh, this is a restoration. This falls under my restoration terms and not repair terms. Uh, which restorations uh, kind of follow a different uh, pattern of repair here at my business. So uh, I have had to repair what was originally done first to get the uh, baseline board back to way that back the way it should be. So this is an HIP forty eighty based amplifier, and I've, I have a few videos about this particular style of board. The HIP 4080 is an IC. Uh, I do see Mauser has them in stock. Well, uh, recently I just picked up some from Mauser. They had them in stock, the HIP 4080s and the 4081s, which the 4081s we don't use as much in the amplifier uh, repair industry, but we do use a lot, several of the 4080s. Uh, so uh, it does have a new 4080 installed the original 4080 was shorted so i got the power supply back up and running uh, this has 
some MIC gate drivers and the power supply running off a SG3525 IC, just a standard power supply. Uh, eh, I wouldn't use the word standard. We're going to get to that. Uh, just another typical pulse width modulated power supply. There we go. Uh, we'll just leave it at that for right now. But uh, this thing came in the diodes on the board, all but on all but two diodes were gone. They were removed. Removed. They weren't even on the board. They had desoldered them and removed them. Uh, they pulled off some decoupling capacitors, left the, that empty and blank. I mean, whoever worked on this, uh, just I don't believe really. I don't want to say knew what they were doing, but probably didn't understand the 4080 circuit in general to be able to diagnose and repair the circuit. So with this particular board, um, I, of course, with every amp, I start with power supply. So I pulled all the output transistors and worked on the power supply. I got the power supply up and running. Let me see if I can flip this over. Uh, There we go. Uh, so I got the power step and running. And if you notice, there's four uh, TVSs here. This was an afterthought. It was definitely added after the fact because what they had done was they had seriesed up uh, two uh, 1.5s. The one in 6277, the 1.5 uh, KE. TVS diodes, they had them in series on each one. Well, yeah. That, I think they're trying to uh, alleviate the issue that there are no pull-down resistors on this power supply. So, um, so I just have temped in uh, four TVSs here just to help keep things smoothed out as much as possible until I can get... Uh, the 1.5s in from Mauser. If, yeah, I just, uh, I'm not sure who did this and at what point in the manufacturing process this was added. So I'm not 100% sure. But I'm going to go ahead and put those back in because that's how it came in. And the, since there's no pull down resistors on this, what they have is they have the gate drive IC, goes through a resistor, goes through a diode, just like any other power supply but then it drives the transistor directly so there is no gate resistor on these uh, transistors no gate resistors no pull down resistors there I mean there's the obvious snubbers but there's nothing here it comes right off the 3525 drives the IC the IC goes through the uh, resistor and the diode they must be using that resistor as a as a summed gate resistor uh they do have the diode well the diodes weren't even there i put the diodes back in um uh, and that's it that's all they have done to drive this power supply this in my opinion is bound to fail it's hands down bound to fail so um my job is to get it back up and running i cannot fix or correct deficiencies in manufacturing or engineering uh I can't fix this particular deficiency in this. Uh, there were some traces over on this end that were, I don't know if they were cut or blown open or what, but I had to repair that. Um, without the output transistors in, the power supply will pulse, uh, almost like it's regulating. And uh, with the 4080 in, I did have high and low side drive for both sides. So I knew I was good to install the 31N20s. So this does use the 31N20s throughout on the output section. This is a uh, positive rail amplifier. So I got the 31N20s in, fires up nicely, nothing gets hot uh, whatsoever. I don't even know where is my... Oh, I don't... Okay. So... I got that back up and running. 
At first, I, the pulsing I thought was an issue in the drive to the power supply IC. But then if you start thinking about it, well, a lot of amps really depend on feedback to regulate the power supply. So um, if it was looking for output feedback to regulate the power supply, then uh, I was on the right track to install the output transistors to see if that uh, fluctuating modulation of the power supply stops, and it does. As soon as it sees that proper level, everything goes back the way it should. Um, <clears throat> let me set up the scope here for you guys so as I can show you what we got. Blue, blue is on 20 volts. Let me see if my newly revised laptop here will squeeze in the meter or not the meter oh whoops not that one i want to do the scope let's see what freezes up on me let's see Maybe. All right, let's see if we got that scope up on the screen here. We do. All my cameras are still functional. Oh, hey, look at that. My scope, is my scope working? Uh, where's my channel one? Well, we're... Yeah, it's blinking, so all right. So we got everything set up. So we do have a scope. Uh, <clears throat> right here for you guys. We've got the scope in the corner here. It's uh, attached to each uh, side of the amplifier here. Power's hooked up. Let's 50 hertz input signal at 1.5 volts is going in. So we are good to fire this up. So you'll see that it does take just a second. And there's the output of the amplifier. So, as you can see, we do have a perfect, well, 51.5 hertz. Sorry, my signal generator is still off. I know one day I might fix that. It just needs to be calibrated. Uh, it's a Heathkit IG1272 signal generator. So every now and then you got to go in and adjust things. So, But as you can see, the amplifier now works. And the crazy thing is, is I didn't have to resolve any issues. What I resolved was what they did. Uh, they were on the right track. They just, for some reason, they figured they couldn't figure out the drive. They couldn't understand how to get it going. I'm not sure. Um, but... Uh, it always goes back to make sure you have a power supply, make sure you have an output section, drive, then transistors if you're able to see your drive without the transistors in. Uh, I say it all the time, remove your outputs. That'll just save you a headache, especially if you're doing 31 and 20s. Good luck finding authentic, you know, true 31 and 20s. Uh, all the parts are getting a little bit more available on the market. So, but otherwise, it's all good to go again, uh, except for the TVS is on the bottom of the amplifier. Uh, this is my last hurdle. I am debating on this setup because they are in series. Uh, there are two 1.5s in series. I just don't know why they would be set up in that kind of um, that kind of setup. I don't know. Oh, uh, but that's it. That's where we're at, guys. So I just want to let you know, show you guys that sometimes you have to just understand the circuit and how it works to get something going. Uh, there was really nothing wrong with the amplifier. Uh, had shorted output transistors. I pulled all the output transistors. Had a shorted output HIP4080. Um, I did replace the SGE, the uh, 3525. Um, and I replaced a 15-volt uh, regulator voltage regulator 
because I was thinking that that pulsing of the power supply had something to do with my regulated voltages. Um, sometimes when a voltage regulator gets hot, it will shut itself off. It'll pulse. I see this on some sundown amps. So there's, uh, that's where we're at on this one, guys. Um, I do thank you guys for watching. Um, I do have my affiliate links for my Amazon down below if you're interested in the equipment supplies that I use. I do have links down below for you guys. And uh, it does help support the channel and the work that I do. I do thank you guys for watching. Uh, keep, stay safe. Keep your fingers out of the rails. Some rails can get a lot higher than others. This one's only about 60 volts, so this one's not too bad. So we will catch you guys on the next one. Have a great end of the year. Thanks for watching, guys.